Hello and welcome to the Bright Blue Innovation. I'm Lydia Paulinska and I'm delighted to be your host. Today's show is an on location at Automobility Los Angeles 2016. This is a new name for the merger of LA Auto Show that first appeared in 1907 and Connected Car Expo. The new event is a unified showcase for new and established members of the industry to discuss and show off innovation in personal transportation. This is the second part of the show. Um, the question is, so what is the reason that uh, Hyundai Motors Cars is shifting to Hyundai Mobile right now? Uh, mobility. Mobility. mobility? Well, well, it's, Hyundai it's mobility. yeah, so, so we have historically, the industry has transport, uh, historically been a transportation business. We, we build vehicles that transport people from point A to point B. And now that vehicles are connected and they're really a, 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 the world's largest smartphone, there's so much more to it than just transportation. It, it's, it's connecting with other cars, with other people, with really with other infrastructure. And, and the ability to, for, the, for the car to be something more than transportation is where the market is going. It's where uh, an entirely new generation of buyers, generation um, uh, Y, generation Z now, their expectation of a vehicle is completely different. They don't look to a vehicle for freedom, which we did when I was growing up. I turned 16, I got my license the same day, and it was it was my expression of freedom and our expression of freedom. It's now a different expression. It's an expression of communication and connectivity with, with, with everything. So we have to respond to that. We as, a, as an industry have to respond to that, and I think that's why you're seeing most everybody talking about mobility. It's it's all about digitalization of our business and the connectivity of life, and it's just it's a, it's a different business environment now. Yeah, and it's uh, but also mobility in the uh, Hyundai case, it's uh, actually understandable. Like you know, sharing the vehicle and don't necessarily own the vehicle, but use us more like uh, utility. Sure, there there is uh, many different models that are emerging right now. There is. Uh, there's ride sharing, there's card sharing, there's all of these different models. We are, we are playing, and the, 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 the industry is changing so much. So, so we are involved in, in initiatives, um, developing out how and what ride sharing, car sharing looks like. We're involved in autonomous vehicles. We're involved in all sorts of different electrific electrification vehicles. So there's so much going on. I, I personally believe that the car business will change more in the next five years than it has in the last 50 years. And all of these, mobility, connectivity, uh, car sharing, ride sharing, all of that is at play. So I think there's gonna be a tremendous amount of change and we have to cover the waterfront with initi initiatives. We're, nobody's quite sure where that goes, but we have to be ready to go in any direction. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Paul, uh, we um, attend the press conference this morning and we hear that the company was actually founded in the almost very difficult time that no one was thinking about doing another car or doing something about uh, in 2008 or 2007, right? Uh, well, the, it was incorporated in 2009. I started the project in 2008. So how this all got started, I had an engineering firm with 46 degree engineers doing new product development in automotive. And if you remember back then, oil was going through the roof and I'd watch the news every night and just get frustrated seeing all this wealth pour out of our country. And one day, instead of getting mad about it, I decided to go do something about it. So I went into work and I grabbed 10 guys and said, hey, we're gonna design a car. And so that, that was in 2008, we incorporated it in 2009 and we've been uh, rolling ever since. And you demand that, you know, when you come with the idea, things happen quickly. Well, yeah, so we, the initial target was we were going to build a $5,000 car that got 65 miles per gallon and with no data on what was possible. And as we worked the problem, uh, 5,000 turned into 7,300, but 65 turned into 84 miles per gallon. So, uh, you, you know, and we're pretty proud of that. So what, um, what are you showing today in uh, that So we had built five prototypes, and that prototype behind you we unveiled at the LA Auto Show last year and that was the last of the prototypes. This is the engineering series vehicles. We're building 23 engineering series vehicles. 
and they look the same from 20 feet away, but this is much more mature. So this has got an actual uh, stamped frame underneath, whereas that was a cut and weld frame. This has got real glass in it, whereas that's plexiglass. This has got the airbags present, HVAC. So this is, is much, much closer to final production than the prototype. And the plans for the future? Uh, well, we, we plan to start production in late 2017. Wonderful. Congratulations, and thank you very much. We're looking forward. Oh, thank you. Making it easy to access for a new type of buyer requires something more, something better. It requires a new ownership model, the first such model in the automotive industry. Dean Evans has more on this exciting new concept. Thank you, Mark. As the better brand, we're focused on improving our customers' lives through better thinking and better products. We add value to those products by offering conveniences and services to reduce stress and instill confidence and give our customers peace of mind. The Ionic Electric is built to provide an environmentally conscious, compromise-free driving experience. And today, I'm happy to announce we're adding value to that experience by creating a better ownership experience. We're calling it Ionic Unlimited, and it gives customers a different path to emissions-free mobility, while eliminating the confusion of purchasing or leasing a vehicle. Think of Ionic Unlimited as an innovative subscription service. Here's what we mean by subscription. Ionic Unlimited requires no down payment. There are no regulations in purchase or no hidden fees. Customers pay nothing up front, just a fixed monthly installment based on the term and trim level they prefer. Traditional add-ons like registration and dock fees and miscellaneous expenses are included. So the price you see is the price you pay. Now what differentiates Ionic Unlimited ownership experience from a traditional purchase or lease is that it covers all vehicle ownership and operating costs. In one simple monthly payment, subscribers get a no compromise EV with America's best warranty and a lifetime battery warranty. They get free scheduled maintenance, parts and labor, along with free wear items for the whole term. And there's even more. An Ionic Unlimited subscription includes free charging through a monthly reimbursement based on the miles you drive. Since Ionic Unlimited subscribers will be paying nothing for charging while driving a fun, connected, zero emissions vehicle, they'll probably rack up a lot of miles. So to make the subscription even better, we're including unlimited miles with no penalties for overages and charges. All told, there has never been a better way to operate and own a car. It's a worry-free ownership experience and a whole new concept in the automotive landscape. A better concept customers will really appreciate. Now to make Unlimited, to make purchasing an Ionic Unlimited even easier, we're offering an online buying experience. Customers can select a vehicle from their dealer's inventory choose the term, and simply go to the dealership and complete the transaction. It's a completely new and hassle-free way to buy your Ionic. It's an entirely better purchase experience. Now our better ownership experience, Ionic and Limited, will only be available in customers starting in California early next year, and will provide more details of the rollout plan and pricing very soon. Reach now is a wholly owned subsidiary of BMW. We provide today car sharing services, uh, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the new things we do. Uh, but we're a really new part of BMW. That's why it's our first show. And in fact, we're so new. When we launched in April in Seattle, which is our North American headquarters, I hadn't even officially joined the company. I was at the launch event, but I got to kind of watch it from behind the scenes. And on that day in April, we had about 370 cars. We had a really small team of about 15 people. We were living in a, a temporary borrowed office space. We were in every possible way you can imagine a startup. 
what I want to talk about now is, well, as of yesterday, a lot's happened. We're now in two cities, Seattle and Portland, as of yesterday. We're now over 760 cars, and we have six different BMW models in our fleet. Is that we've gotten over 32,000 Reach Now members across those two cities. And those people have driven just in the over six months or so over 1.2 million miles using our car sharing service. So this morning, the first thing I'd like to announce is our third city. And when we launched in Seattle in April, we said we were a service for North America. We were going to cover the continent and the major urban centers across the U.S. and across the entire continent. And so our next city is Brooklyn, New York. Now, that means we've got service in Seattle, Portland, and Brooklyn. We've got now over a thousand cars in our car sharing fleet. And we've now going to include seven different BMW models. We want it to be about more than just car sharing. The car sharing is hugely important. It's really the foundational service upon which everything Reach Now does is built. It allows us to put a fleet in these cities. It allows us to put teams in each one of these cities that can support and grow and, and nurture that market. But when Mr. Peter Schwarzenbauer, the BMW board member, was in Seattle to launch Reach Now, he talked about this desire for Reach Now to be more than just about car sharing to be more than just about driving, but also being driven. For being more than just about taking cars from our fleet, but about sharing cars between two different people in a peer-to-peer in a -peer way. And finding ways to borrow cars, not just for a few minutes or to be charged per minute, but to take cars for much longer periods of time, as long as you wanted, and be able to, to bring them back when you're done with them and use them on demand. Our mission is to make life less complicated, to increase the level of convenience and opportunities for our customers. And that's why we launched, together with the S90, the Volvo Concierge. It takes the online services, it takes the online processes yet to another level. It brings a human touch to it, because what is it? You can talk to someone online or just via the traditional telephone. We have seven persons sitting in Rockley, not in India, not in Europe, in Rockley at our headquarters, helping our customers to buy a car, helping our customers to define the most perfect specification. It's all online, but it gives this little extra human, human touch. We can even go so far that prior to delivery, we set the radio stations for the customer. We, 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 we fulfill other very individualistic demands. And now we are going to expand this Volvo Concierge. Today we are very excited to expand extra services to the Volvo Concierge. It will be part of on-call, and it gives the customer the option to never again take their car for gas, wash, or service again. Please let's look at the small, at the short film. At Volvo Cars, we innovate to make life better and less complicated. So we asked ourselves, what if our in-car technology could do more for you? What if you could open up your car to a suite of bespoke on-demand services that expands the utility of the car and simplifies the ownership experience. That, in short, is Volvo Concierge. When connected, you can order a range of services. Send your car to any location by providing a secure digital key to an authorized Volvo Concierge driver. your car sent to the nearest Volvo retailer, serviced and returned. Fuel or wash your car while you're working, sleeping, or even traveling abroad. Volvo Concierge opens up a world of possibilities where the Volvo ownership experience is seamless and uncomplicated. An experience where your Volvo is in the service of you.
<laughs> so how does it work? It, it provides the customer with a one time to use secure digital key. It's location and time specific. And it sends a signal to an authorized vendor which can provide the services, which can provide fill up the car, wash the car, or bring the car to wherever you want it to be. What's the difference? Because there are services like this. The difference is that we aggregate all those services under our Volvo Concierge app where payment is taken care of, the vendor is selected, and it's a very secure platform. And it can all be done from whatever location you are, and it can be done from your mobile phone. When the digital, when the, action, when the, when the activity exp is done, when it's all filled, when your car is done, the digital key expires and everything is locked and the situation is as it was before. What are you demonstrating here? What are you showing? We're at LA Mobility uh, to show off our latest infotainment camera and navigation solutions that Garmin markets and sells to the automotive OEM marketplace. Uh, this product you have behind you is an HMI concept that brings back knobs into the vehicle. And so each of the knobs that you see here are dedicated to a function, uh, navigation, media, communications, which would be your phone or connectivity, and then also climate for your HVAC or temperature controls. And essentially what this concept allows us to do is instead of using the touch screen to operate a control, we simply bring the knob back in. So by bumping it in a direction, it'll bring up a menu that allows me to choose something. This is a recently found menu. So by simply selecting, I can click and I'm off and navigating. If I want to then go to media, I can bring up my media and playlist here. I also have the ability to bring up phone and go through my call. So you see how the name will change on each of the knob. These are OLED displays, and each of these displays has those functions dedicated to the feature that it's representing. What we found is we did a study with this product that we released publicly, and that study found that using a typical touchscreen or using this system, those kind of 90% functions of going home or changing the track or finding a contact to call are done a lot quicker with a knob-based approach, which then allows the customer to keep their eyes on the road. And so we show this off here as a concept to pitch to automakers and to also show the things that Garmin, as an automotive OEM company, is working on. So is that the new or is that updated version? Yeah, so this is new and we'll be having a new concept of this at the Consumer Electronics Show that we're working on now that's just getting ready for release. So this is the version we showed just this year. Thank you very much. So what other products? Yeah, in, in the background here, this is a classic infotainment screen. So Garmin still does believe in touch screens as well. And this is our Android based system for infotainment that's marketed uh, in the APAC and Middle East regions with Toyota and Honda. And it has a very nice interface we call the Cube. And you can see it's very quick uh, response time with the processor that we're using. It also has some ability to do the same thing just by gesture control with my fingers. I can also mute or unmute the radio with three fingers approaches. And this does full navigation, full media, full phone, and has the capabilities to then also offer smartphone connectivity, whether that's Apple CarPlay or Mirrorcast, we can directly take the phone's image and put it on here. So it offers a, a valuable level of different connectivity options for the customer and for the markets that we sell it in. That sounds fantastic. So what else? I see yeah. some more, One some more, more product. One more thing we're showing here is Garmin has been offering camera solutions for a long time now. This is our first automotive OEM grade camera that we sell and market in the China region and also Europe. Uh, we just launched it with Peugeot Citron and it's available on a couple different vehicles in the China region. And what it is, it's a, it's a camera that allows uh, the customer to be able to get incident warning. So if there's an accident and the airbag deploys, we then record the 30 seconds before and after that. So we show what happened in that accident for insurance purposes. But also we have an algorithm that Garmin does ourselves that we're doing lane detection warning. So if you get out of your lane, we know that and we warn you that you're about to exit your lane. Or if you're traveling too close to someone in front of you, we give you an incident warning for front crash warning as well. We also have some social media capabilities in the product. 
So if you were to see a meteor or you see a wreck or you see something really neat happen, this is always recording through your car. You simply push a button through your phone, which is an app that we created. We allow you to uh, basically broadcast that across, across your social media network. And so you can show everybody the meteor flying across. You can show everybody, you know, maybe a bear or deer ran in front of you or something. And so it offers a, a unique capability. So Garmin's been doing action cameras and driving cameras, but these are our first integrated cameras. And you can imagine the, the rear view mirror sitting here, and then this camera looks out the front of the car all the time. Yeah, it's very, you know, I would say do. Perfect size. Yes, perfect size. Uh, you can take an SD card out or hook a computer up to it to look at the data, and then it timestamps it with GPS, right? So you know where you were in the road, what time of day it was, what speed you were traveling, uh, and all those things. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Dan Knoll. I work for Wind River Systems. Wind River is a subsidiary of Intel, and we're part of the Intel automotive team. Uh, I personally lead uh, product development and strategy for Wind River. And what we're showing today is a concept demonstration in the format of a buck. So this looks like the front seat of a car with the kind of the advanced modern displays that a car shows as part of its architecture. And we have a concept demo kind of running in a pseudo windshield kind of format, which is showing you what might be portrayed or presented on kind of an, an advanced concept windshield while a car is driving autonomously. In the back, we also actually have show a rear seat yeah, we can go in the back. We actually don't have a rear seat uh, mounted here, but you can imagine there being passengers in the back seat. They have their own display with their own applications and kind of automotive uh, displays that they can play with, they can visualize to, to understand the experience. Winover offers some products into this market. We call our family of products for automotive Helix chassis. Helix, you know, being the DNA symbol. And our products are software platforms that address cockpit solutions, safety solutions we call drive, and cloud-based solutions to do over the update of in-car uh, control units, ECUs. So those are our three products, part of the Helix chassis family. Um, is that the new products? Are they the new products or they are these evolutionary are, these are, versions? These are new products from Wind River based upon foundational technology Wind River's had for a long time but we've advanced them and interconnected these products into a common architecture to, to address the automotive industry totally. So if, to, if you can explain the situation that it, we so, your product is solving for us. Absolutely, so car manufacturers today traditionally buy components kind of in isolation. And the modern car needs to be architected holistically. Things need to connect, data needs to connect, security needs to be assured end to end, functionality needs to kind of seamlessly move from one display to another display. That's the, the consumer's expectation. So our product, Helix Chassis, a common architecture for automotive software, takes these three very different use cases and integrates them into a common framework. So it's make our life easier in the it's car. It's make your life easier as a consumer, but in particular it's going to make an OEM's life easier as they architect their solution and they then provide recommendations to their supply chain to say, we would like you to consider this common architecture approach so that our cockpit and dashboard and center screens and heads-up displays and rear seats can work together. So is that any agreement for now that uh, what car of, uh, will be having this product? Well, I think that all cars are going to have uh, examples of this across low-end to high-end. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So what you're showing out there at the uh, Automobility Show? Uh, we're presenting our Kryptonium uh, product line. Uh, Kryptonium consists of uh, two products, uh, which is the co-production tool, uh, which is a tool which is used uh, for avoiding uh, tempering and uh, reverse engineering of uh, software applications, and our secure key box, which is a white box implementation of standard crypto algorithms. So is that the new product, or this is uh, evolution ver version of the old product, or what is it? It's, it's not a new product, but it's an evolution, uh, of course, and uh, we've started to migrate into the automobility uh, industry some years ago. Uh, we have customers who are utilizing our security solutions for protecting software running on vehicles or um, software communicating with vehicles, uh, and that's why we're here today to, to strengthen our position in this industry. Can you uh, tell us the situation what your uh, product is solving? Just what, when we need that? Okay, so that's a really good question. So what we're doing is uh, we provide uh, our engineering tools for 
enabling our customers to make applications temper resistant. So if somebody is trying to hack into a car, for example, and want to get access to a specific um, piece of software, reverse engineering, learn about it, and to modify it so that they can either tamper with the system, uh, modify the use of the brakes, or uh, steer the car if that's what they want to do, uh, they can do that if, if the application itself is unprotected. Now, we, our customers, they have a strong need for protecting the software against reverse engineering, tampering, modification, injection of malicious code. And um, if they use our tools, we support them achieving that. So they all have a common, they are software developers, and this software needs to stay intact. Uh, the integrity of the application needs to be protected. And uh, sometimes they want to uh, yeah, keep their IP with themselves. Would you, if, um, if you say, uh, oh, there's just one message about your company, about the company, what that would? OK. The message, one message, the message would be, um, make sure that you treat the software running in a car in the same way as you treat software running on a desktop computer or a smartphone, uh, because that's the future of the car. It's going to be another endpoint, another device, which runs uh, software in an insecure environment. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So, Evan, what is this beautiful bike, urban bike, what you're demonstrating here uh, at Mobility? Absolutely. This is uh, the future of personal transportation. It allows people to save time and money when they commute. It's a foldable electric vehicle, all built right here in Southern California. Uh, that does literally that, save people time and money every day as they go to and from work. Uh, or around their own neighborhood. It really opens up a world of possibilities, helping people solve that last mile and micro mile problems. So is that um, you can fold it, right? Yep. You can take on the public transportation, you can take Exactly, you can take it on the MTA, you can take it on public transportations everywhere, on the bus, on the subway. You can even put it in the back of an Uber if you're going into town and want more access once you get in town. It's the lightest in the world by over 10 pounds, uh, and it's made out of really high quality materials that are definitely built to last. It's on the market already? Yep, we've sold over 2,000 of them, worked very hard for every one of those, but uh, we have really happy customers. We have incredible reviews on our website. People are passionate about saving time and money, and we're thrilled to be able to do that for them. And I see that you have some uh, kind of recognition already yes. as a top startup at the Automobility Show. So can it tell us what's happened or why they choose you? Are you the winner? Yeah, we uh, won top 10. Uh, we're very proud of this uh, award. It really brings a lot of recognition to the change we're trying to make in the world of transportation. We know people out there, they're looking for solutions. More roads aren't necessarily being built, but there's more cars on, all this, cars on all the same roads. So we really saw that there was a need for a better way to transport yourself that didn't involve sitting in traffic or, or sweating on the way to, to get to the office. Do you have one? I do, of course, absolutely. I just get to spend more time in the gym every morning by owning one of these. So uh, it's really changed my own life. My wife, my wife is thrilled about that. So uh, what are the future of this bike? Yeah, absolutely. It's built out of carbon fiber and aircraft grade aluminum right here in America. It goes 20 miles on a single charge. Really, really powerful lithium ion battery. You can even charge your cell phone right from the battery. Uh, and it goes 15 miles per hour. So it's classified as a bicycle and you can ride it anywhere a bicycle is allowed. So how, uh, how easy is to fold this? It's extremely easy to fold. It took us a long time to engineer such a seamless motion, you can do it in less than one second. And there's no other product on the market. And the weight? Like the weight, it weighs 35 pounds, lightest in the world, and it can support someone well over 250 pounds. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us for today's show. And ho I hope you enjoy it. And see you next week.